I will remind you all here of today's day, 8 August. Today is the day, one of two days, when the Lord heard the greatest cry come from the world of the most souls extinguished at one time. Imagine that. When the bomb was dropped, and immediately, in the blink of an eye, 29,720 people immediately evaporated. If the same bomb were dropped in the same location today, the immediate death would be of 177,210. And the prolonged death of radiation sickness would be of greater than half a million. Think and pray on that. Our lesson for today is titled, Your Faith is Yours. Keep your worship private and sacrosanct. There are three sections based on various Gospels. The first is titled, Hypocrites in Faith. Think of all of the churches you have ever visited and worshipped in during your lifetime. In almost every one of them, if not every one of them, there are people or a person who deliberately draw attention to themselves during the worship by their worship. These are the people of whom Jesus speaks in Matthew 5, the hypocrites of faith. Those who put themselves above and head of the minister or priest in the service. Some going so far as to step into the aisle at the cathedral or a larger church so that they may ostentatiously and noticeably kneel down on the bare stone to be holier or closer to God. Others will interrupt services by calling out their responses to the prayers overly loud and behind the congregation by a full second or two, deliberately. Oh, that they're mentally ill, obviously so, some will say. Or, he's just slow, so he responds slow. But no such thing is true. They do it because they want to be noticed within the service by all present and they mean to be disruptive to the worship of everyone else to prove their holiness and their worth to God. That is a deliberate act that disengages all the others' communication to their Lord. It is hypocritical of them to claim their worth by disrupting the worship of others. I having worked for nearly a decade in the church, first as an usher, and then as the minister of music. A lady who took to calling herself the bishop because she knew that in another life she must have been one because I am so close to God, she said. When we, the ushers, saw her enter the church, we took notice of where she was sitting and one of the other of us ushers would go and move her quietly to the back of the seating area prior to the start of any service. Else she'd happily step out into the ceremonial procession at a high celebration, Pentecost, Advent, Christmas, Easter. And she'd even step into the aisle at funerals and weddings. But if she sat in the back, with no one as witness to her antics. 
She simply wor worshipped as a regular participant. But we had to keep an eye on her until after the service started. She wanted, needed an audience. She didn't give a wit if God was witness. Almsgiving. For those with excessive almsgiving, as an accountant and auditor, I was witness to ceremonies of those ostentatious ceremonial large checks being handed to the church pastor for this fund or for that special use, all in front of the news cameras. By the way, no, you can't cash those things. There's no banking information on them. And more's the pity, as the later real check was very often quite different, or it never came through at all. And when a large donation is publicized, replacing it when the donor has, public, has not publicly released notice of financial issues or any legal authority doing an audit for mismanagement of funds, it is next to impossible to replace it and it threatens the entire project or program. That the funds fail to be realized occurs in over 20% of all of those public checks being donated. The faith-based organization never receives those monies. And everyone says, go to the mother church to get the rest. No church in this world is cash rich, and few are property rich as most own mortgages on the majority of the land where the church buildings sit. Finally, your faith is yours. Pray by yourself. At the very least, say your prayers as a family with your children around you, but have a time to say your private and personal conversation with your brother Jesus or the Father Almighty and or your saint, or with all of them, and do that privately. Though I record these publicly each and every day, do you want to know how many of my family and friends really appear to know or ken what I'm doing each day? Less than a dozen. Despite publicly posting it on Facebook for over two and a half years. Doesn't, they don't see, they don't look, they're really truly unobservant folk. I went to school with the same bunch for over 12 years, but during that time my brothers were also going to the same school with me, one one year and one two years ahead. And these same people didn't ever figure out that we were siblings, though we had the same name. Keep your faith private. If you need Eucharist brought to you because you're at home, contact your church office directly. It removes so many issues that coming from a relative doesn't have. In COVID, use the spiritual communion that I've posted multiple times. I've checked with authorities of every Protestant denomination and Catholicism. You may use this in place of the physical sacrament up to once per day. You may use the spiritual communion rite or prayer to fulfill the novena like the nine first Fridays of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. By the way, today is a first Friday. You don't, quote, lose points that physical sacrament wasn't possible for this. But do it privately. Do it between you and the Lord. If you have issues, discuss them with a spiritual advisor. Note, I am trained and always available for anyone on Facebook Messenger. It is private. Print this gospel in lesson and post it for yourself. Keep this one, please. You will want to refer to it to remind yourself of what you should do 
and may do. And now I am wishing you each a truly blessed day. May you go in the grace of God to be of service to others, to act in love and compassion towards each person you encounter, displaying for all the acceptance of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And may you always be in the peace of our Lord wherever you go. Amen.